Josh Mike Vasey, thanks for coming on the podcast, mate. <laughs> no worries, Jake. No mate, it's, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I know, it's been a few years, hasn't it? I know, yeah. Um, I think the last time i seen you, it was probably... I think it was here, actually. Yeah, Penman's Pem yeah, Sevens. Yeah, yeah, Sevens, yeah. yeah. You were playing for the Eggs. What was that? What, that's, I think it's got to be like 2010. Yeah, so that's good 11, 11 years ago. Yeah. So you, um, you were... I was in uh, France then. Were you? Yeah, because I had two weeks off. Wow. Uh, so I came, yeah, played, I played, uh, played for the Eggs and then played for Camborne the week after, so... Yeah, I just came down. No one knew that I was going to play. So <laughs> I got in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think Jamal was the same when he. Yeah. He wasn't allowed to yeah, play. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to play, but <laughs> no, too good not to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you went from Campbell and you played at uh, Mount's Bay, didn't you? Yeah, I went to Campbell. I, I went to Mount's that. Bay. Um, didn't have. It was a tough season. We got relegated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a massive jump. Um, obviously playing men's rugby at Campbell, I think it was at Western Counties. Yeah. And then going into National League Two was. A big jump, yeah, big jump, yeah, and uh, but what 17, 18? Yeah, 17. And then luckily, after that, because I was still at college, uh, they picked me up and uh, went to the Chiefs, so I was quite lucky with that. Nice, but um, no, I enjoyed Mount's Bay, it was good, yeah, good bus trips, and you know, There's really good players playing, for they them, did, man. And got it, it was, a couple of pirates, boys, didn't they? Way ahead of their time, yeah, um, it just wasn't very sustainable. No. I don't think it was pretty much by the best players around, and yeah, go from there, which you know, resulted in them folding. Yeah, it was a bit unfortunate, really. Um, so from there, then you went on to Chiefs. Yeah. And then racing. Yeah, went to racing. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Out of the blue as well. So I pronounced that wrong. Going to racing. No, <laughs> can't, can't <laughs> say you were. Yeah, it was cool. It was out of the blue. Um, Rob Rob Baxter X uh, told me that I wasn't going to be wasn't going to be needed the the season after. Right. And then within the next couple of days, I had a, an offer from from racing. Uh, just went to him and said can I go because I, I had to be released early yeah um, and he was fine with it which was great because he could have been he could have been an asshole with it and yeah, you yeah. know put, dug his feet in the ground but he, he seen it as an opportunity for me and uh, that's good that yeah, yeah grateful for that yeah you know, always be grateful for that and uh, so then yeah how was France then how was that for you like transitioning into obviously you, you don't know I'd, well, I assume you didn't know much French. No, I didn't. Not Campbell uh, School. No, I took French. I, t I did take French at school. But did you? Did you? It wasn't the lessons I went to. <laughs> so, yeah, it was tough. It was it was a tough few few first months because, like you said, I I went those injury covers. So I arrived on a on a Tuesday and I was playing on Saturday. And right. I still kind of didn't really know the calls and yeah, it was a little bit all in the air. I was just kind of backed. I backed my kind of instinct and just to play rugby, whereas. The more obviously you know, the easier it is to to communicate to other people yeah. what you want and how you're going to run and the moves that you want called. So yeah, yeah, definitely. As I got as I got more involved there, and the more I got to hang out with the players that are French, um, it became easier. Nice, yeah. So it's just sort of slowly easing into it, and then you just sort of adapt to the culture, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. we we had to do lessons every Monday, like it was compulsory for foreigners to do to do um to do lessons but I actually learned way more just on the beers and coffees <laughs> it was so much better yeah. like just the slang relax yeah because yeah. you wouldn't speak formal English if we were hanging out would we no so it's all like the slang words and, and yeah. stuff like that that I learned way better than uh than the lessons so um from there then you went up to no you went back to Worcester was it Worcester yeah, Worcester, yeah. so Anna, Anna got pregnant with Lanny so yeah. for us it was we don't want to be in a foreign country no. so we're like should we just head back and uh, luckily Racing signed Jamie Roberts right. so it was like kind of worked really well oh, that's great, so yeah. I was able to get out my final year and, and head to Worcester um, and yeah it was it was awesome a uh, great club uh, facility wise yeah, it's one of the best clubs in the country facilities, but you know, results. I think over time you can see they're not the they're not the greatest. They're always around the bottom, which is unfortunate because it's a town that's built for rugby. Yeah, yeah. But it's just yeah, just don't get the results. No, just like yeah, why is that? You always get those clubs that just sit around that sort of yeah. fringe between like Premiership and championship don't you I can't put my you, finger on it yeah like Newcastle were it, like, it yeah. for a while you had like Leeds when they yeah. were up there um, yeah I completely agree with you it's, it's, it's a tough thing to it's a big jump though going down 
isn't it? Like, oh, sorry, yeah. coming up either way. It's yeah, whoever huge. normally goes down comes straight back up, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's a massive gap. Um, but that year, that year at Exeter when we went up, it was like we felt that we had the firepower to yeah to go. And we, I think we went unbeaten until could be wrong, maybe March. So we was unbeaten the whole the middle of the whole season. So we had a lot of confidence. We yeah. had a lot of players that played the Prem. So we were. We were in a good space, um, and then yeah, so yeah, nice. So and then from there you went to Wales, didn't you? Yeah, I went to Ospreys. Ospreys yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was um, again timing was good. Um, that looked like it was good fun. That I yeah, I I probably played some of my best rugby there. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd injured my hand at Worcester like, for the second time, so I had, I had a plate and some pins put in my hand, and I wasn't going to resign at Worcester anyway. So, right. Uh, Dean Ryan, who was there at Worcester at the time. He said, "Like, why don't you just go back, uh, go back home now? Because you're not going to play." So I, I was able to come home. And me and Anna set up home in Newquay, and had six months there. So it was perfect before the season started. So you've got a place down here now. Yeah, well, I live. Yeah, I live in Newquay. Oh right. So yeah, I, I pretty much commute. So oh, do yeah, you? I commute to Bath. Yeah, I love it. Mate, that's wild. yeah. How long does it take you? Two and a half, three hours. But yeah, I'd rather be at home. That's class. Yeah. I didn't realise yeah. that. I thought you lived in Bath. No, I got a flat there, but I, yeah. it's something I just don't. I don't really use. I just I'd rather be at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you've gone from Ospreys up to Newcastle. Yeah. Um, did uh, Joel join you when you were there? Yeah, Joel was with me at the Ospreys. Oh, uh, out of the Ospreys. Yeah. Oh, right. So it was cool because I obviously got to share experience with him. Yeah. So. Uh, also as well he he got to live somewhere else so he, he wasn't in each other's pockets all the time yeah but um, that no, was cool just being able to work with him daily was, was good and then see him grow and see him, yeah give your yeah, knowledge on yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and then the Ospreys was great because obviously players like Dan Bigger Reese Webb uh, Tipperick uh, Alan Wynne Jones you know these guys were all there so I was like big names that yeah, got loads just, of experience yeah and just being around them all, all the time yeah you pick up loads of stuff from them um, off the pitch, on the pitch, um, yeah, I, was, I really enjoyed my time at the Ospreys and Wales. Like, well, Wales in Wales, basically, that is a rugby country. They're mad, they? is it? Yeah, it's, it's like mad. they love it, don't they? Yeah, they it, absolutely love it. Yeah, they. Like, Dan Big calls it a fishbowl because it is like you're literally if you play rugby in Wales, you're. It's just such a small area, but yeah. Like you say, the country is manic, <laughs> and it's great. You know, it's awesome. It's nice to be in a place where, like you say, rugby is the to main. be a Wendell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if you lose, obviously, then you, you do get it in the neck. Do but you? Yeah, it's, and they're not afraid to tell you, which is yeah. It was an eye opener, and then uh, yeah, lucky Zero enough, a hero and straight back again, sort of. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't give a shit really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed. I enjoyed Wales. I'm um, just because I, I I hardly got injured there, so I played. I think I played like nearly ninety games in three seasons. So I was just racking up the games. Yeah, which was great because we get to go to like places like Munster, Leinster. Yeah, playing against like Johnny Sexton and all was was awesome. Nice. Um, Paul O'Connell. Um, so yeah, that was unbelievable. And then had the yeah, opportunity with we were playing Newcastle I was at the Ospreys we were playing Newcastle in the European game and Dean Richards just rang out the blue and was like oh would you like to come to Newcastle and Newcastle wasn't really renowned for being a great great club because obviously like you said they're on the fringes all the time Yeah. so I was like oh, I don't know if I want to go to Newcastle because I don't know if I want to go back in the champ I don't know if I want yeah. to be like scrapping it again yeah um they but, fell back down you'd end up sort of like you said yeah, having just, a fight again yeah and I was, just, I was in my prime so I was like 26, 27 so I didn't really want to chance it but he, he oh, it was still pretty early what he wanted how he wanted to play um, and financially it was great so I was like talked to Anna you know about moving the kids um, from Swansea so that was like Lanny's second well that had been Lanny's second, second move so I was just like okay we'll go to Newcastle and loved it such a cool place yeah the t- the tune is unbelievable <laughs> yeah yeah they're pretty mad up there aren't they yeah I don't understand what they were saying but like, <laughs> just like this, the city was so cool um, good vibes and yeah. then like 10 minutes you're in the sea um, 10 minutes you're in the country so it was like yeah that's good it was amazing nice. and 
although it was so far from home like it was it was nice to have Joel there because it is a slice of home yeah of course yeah, yeah you could just talk Cornish like talk uh, talk the way we talk yeah so I really enjoyed it yeah um, yeah you got and that would have been good for him as well wouldn't it yeah especially being as young as he is and yeah. having his older brother there yeah and he's English qualified as well so like for him is a chance to go to an English club yeah rather than a Welsh club obviously but oh, right. yeah that worked out really well for him yeah that's good so from there you back down at Bath yeah um, didn't you go there to their academy when you were younger? Yeah, like when I was like 13, 14, my uncle Frank, he was the head there. Head oh, of, was he? Yeah, head, he was academy manager. But I didn't go there for like, you know, like half terms, Easter holidays, summer holidays. End up like running water for the first team, like in their training. Yeah. Um, but it's just so funny how it's all come like full, full circle. Yeah, yeah. So Jamie Roberts moved and I came in for Jamie. So it's just like, again, what happened like literally like yeah. six years ago? Sort of the other way around. Just swapped, yeah. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, Bath's good. Like location wise where it is, it was really helpful because like I said I can it's I quite can, central, wouldn't it? Yeah, I can live in Newquay. Um it takes me a couple of hours to get up. It's close to Bristol, so yeah. It's got a lot going for it. Again, it's a rugby town. They're rugby mad there. And i don't really I didn't realise how big of a club it is. Everyone seems to know you play for Bath because yeah. it is such a huge club. So I'm very lucky to, to be in that position. Yeah, no, that's cool. So um Obviously, going back to your grassroots then, starting at Camborne, um, what was that like playing for Camborne as a young lad? Yeah, that was my goal. Yeah. That was what like, me and my brothers wanted to do was play for the first team. Yeah. So, growing up, like, the, the first team were, were our, our like idols were like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, know. running out the tunnel, we're like, oh, I want to do that when I'm older. <laughs> and then obviously, getting to play for Camborne then was, was unbelievable. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And then, it just happened so quick. Um, I was like 16, 17, I had to get like a note from the old man to play men's rugby because yeah. I was so young. Um, you couldn't scribble it down quick enough. No, nah, I was just trying to wait. You yeah. know, I was waiting until October till I was 17 so I could play men's rugby. So it was like, yeah, unbelievable. And then my first game was yatting away up in like Bristol area. It was hanging. It was like a car on fire on the <laughs> road. It was like in a state in Bristol. <laughs> I was like 17 I was just got living daylights kicked out of me yeah but um, that was good it, it definitely helped me prepare for for men's rugby because it's so different to, yeah. to age group stuff just getting in that environment isn't it that's yeah. a big thing as well yeah adapting to like from like teenage lads to men it is men isn't it like yeah. they, they work Monday to Friday they, yeah they want to release their anger on yeah. a 17 year old kid which is what you know they did every weekend so so um like with the old man then he, he was like a big influence for yourself for, yeah for going on and playing rugby to the best of your ability yeah I mean he, he wasn't like ever he played for Fiji yeah, yeah he played for Fiji in the 80s but he was never forceful he was never like you're going to play rugby it was like we loved rugby and it was it was like, it was like I don't know so you know when like Wimbledon's on we'd all be playing tennis hmm. and then like some would play cricket so like whatever sport was going we'd be playing yeah but it just happened to be that rugby was that's all we wanted to play really yeah because that like is that just like his presence of like being a rugby guy and like having it like I don't know it's, it's probably just like it came natural for us so like oh, yeah. I loved going out on a Sunday morning for the mini and juniors meeting up my mates from school outside of school playing rugby yeah um, I'd have a ball with me around school because um, like um like we played a bit of county rugby together when we were kids at yeah. like 16 or whatever and like growing up for your age groups you always have really good hands like and like ball skills so like you said playing cricket yeah. tennis um, like you played county cricket as well yeah. when you were a kid and we, we played it together didn't yeah, we yeah, yeah. <laughs> used to open the bowling down the back and he was like yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know if do I was that good do you remember when we went to Taunton Taunton yeah, yeah. is it Kings that was class King, oh, yeah. Kings, good times yeah. but um so obviously playing different sports, I think that's quite important, playing different sports and developing your, your high-eye um, yeah, yeah, hand, yeah. hand -eye coordination. Yeah. Um, just developing your skills, really, yeah. in all sorts of sports. Because you don't even know you're doing it, do you? No. Like with cricket and stuff, you, you know, you're obviously catching the ball, but then you've sort of got to hit the ball yeah. with, uh, with another object. So like getting your eye in there. Um, basketball is the same. Um, played mixed netball, volleyball. Um, so it literally was just tucking into everything. Yeah. But it, it was never like forced. It was never like, it was never to be good at rugby. It was just because I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. And then like I'd, with the old man, we'd go with my brothers on the weekend to Camborne. But it would used to have this, old man used to drive this dodgy van just so we can get like tackle bags. Yeah. 
bags of balls in and we would just play loads of games and it would be like me versus Sam but it would be like yeah pick up one handed was that um, quite a bit comp- like a bit of rivalry yeah like we hated each other yeah I, hate, I hated him like that's no, not like over exaggerating because like, you're such a similar age yeah, yeah I hated him I hated him being in the same group of friends like our friend circle was the same oh was it so it would be like for example playing cricket we'll play cricket on the Saturday morning, uh, Saturday afternoon but we used to have this mate called Paul and Dave, their brothers, um, come pick us up. But I'd say, I'd say to Paul, can you pick us up at half past 10? But I wouldn't tell Sam. Oh. And then obviously go cricket. <laughs> and then Sam would be like, oh, where are you? Be like, oh, cricket. Because you didn't want to hang around with him. Oh. But then like the next week it would be like him, he would do the same. Yeah. So it was like just competition. And then we obviously didn't want to hang around with each other. But like the older we got, the more. You grew up. Yeah, we're actually real close as oh. a three. Yeah, we're really close. Yeah. Um, and yeah going to the World Cup with him in Japan was awesome because I got Mate. to room with him yeah, so like class. just like how how apart we were and then how close we are now is, yeah. is good so what was life life like growing up in Campbell with your three brothers then or two brothers no, I loved it like uh, until you move away you don't realise how I don't want to say shit because it's not shit because it's my childhood but how rough it was yeah, yeah. I didn't realise yeah like we had lived on a council estate in a council house but uh, we just thought it was class because we had kids there the same age as us yeah. so we'd be out all day no phones being a kid yeah just being a kid, yeah. on the bikes yeah. skateboarding down the field with the ball you know so 90s kid yeah, yeah absolutely best times but then when when I take my kids or take my to Canada there my wife and we're just like fuck like, yeah. this is rough as we're at it's like where we live yeah but I wouldn't change it because it's it's not rough for me because I know yeah, yeah, yeah. I know everyone yeah. there so it's just like oh yeah. this is normal <laughs> but like you can see like my kids are like oh the <laughs> the hell is this place <laughs> yeah locked doors locked doors yeah <laughs> but yeah I oh, know I'm grateful I, I love living it's I love, made you who you are I suppose yeah exactly yeah. and like I still have the same group of friends yeah. now so nothing's changed so, like, no. they've not changed either with with my success of rugby and I didn't expect them to which is great you know they're, they're not in it for the wrong reasons no which is which is perfect. Yeah, no, that's great. Good morals there. Um, with like transitioning um, from like amateur rugby to professional, then what is that change like? Is it a bit of a shock, or is it like because you know you turn up on a Tuesday and like most teams yeah, yeah. train Tuesdays, Thursdays, play Saturday, yeah, back to work Monday. Yeah. Whereas um, in a professional environment, what is like? What's the routine for? It's like uh, the best way to describe it is like. Um, imagine being a big brother so imagine like a camera always watching you yeah, yeah. so you know easier, you know when you say if you work all day mm. you go home you have a beer you eat what you want yeah, yeah there's yeah. no like, you don't have to come in a certain weight the day after or <laughs> or like you don't eat to perform at your yeah. job do you so whereas like with rugby or with a professional sport you you're constantly thinking about is this going to help my performance is this going to like aid my recovery so when I go home, I can't just go, oh, fuck, I'll have a pie and chips or pasty and chips or fish and chips. I will, but it won't be like every day. It won't be like, yeah. I'll just, whatever's in the oven or whatever's in the freezer, I'll dig up. It's like, you literally have to plan. And it's like, you're constantly like, fuck, if I, if I have a beer, will I be, able, I won't be able to go yeah. to sleep properly. I won't be able to perform tomorrow at training. So it's like, calories or, exactly. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's always, you're always like, fuck, is, is this what I'm eating to care? this amount of carbs this amount of protein this amount of fats and it's boring but with the way rugby's going you need to do it you, you, you just miss it? out yeah, yeah. And you, you'll miss out on your contract or if you I suppose if you don't give yourself that bigger best chance of getting the best out of yourself yeah. you can't win it yourself for not performing can you exactly and, and yeah that, that's probably the best way to describe it is always imagine there's someone watching you yeah. like a camera so like you always have to be on point with your nutrition um, your sleep you know, not playing too many video games. Um, also, as well, just spend like time with the kids. Yeah, I do. What do you play? I'm rubbish on Fortnite. Oh yeah. Yeah, I play Fortnite. Just more social. See my mates. Yeah. But uh, nah, they're all into COD, but I'm, I'm crap. But I only get like <laughs> I only get like 20 minutes, half an hour a day, because uh, because the kids are just like, can we can we watch Netflix? <laughs> <So> <laughs> I can't. Not I can't that, play too. Yeah, I can't play too much. I just give them the headphones. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's so, probably the best way to. Describe. So, what does the week look up like? Look like through like from Monday to Saturday. To Saturday yeah, yeah. Then? So if you, so if you say we come off a game on Saturday, yeah. Uh, Sunday is like active recovery, so it'd be like pool, um, massage, sauna, uh, bike, like a light spin, 
so there's always something you didn't just sit on your ass all day yeah. and then Monday you're in kind of the same again in the mornings you're trying to move get the body right it's still sore because you're going to be sore aren't you yeah yeah you're going to be sore especially if you had a big game yeah um, get a lot of the meetings done on a Monday so right. like we'll watch back the we'll get a clip sent to us on an app and then right. we'll watch that and then again come in Monday review it um, and it I like I enjoy Mondays. It, it, get, it does get brutal. Is yeah. a lot of criticism. Honesty. Yeah, and it is, and it is to your face, and I like that. There's no pussy footing around. Mate, they do it here. Like, I love it. Like on a Tuesday, like the camera's out. Yeah. And like, you can't no hide. hiding. No, you can't there's hide. no hiding, and you do something wrong, and you're like, no, no, it's definitely his fault. And then you're like, yeah, that's definitely my fault. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it brings out the best. You yeah, know? and, it, and you learn from it. Don't exactly, you? and it's for the right reasons. It's not to have a go at you is no. to try and make the team better which is at the end of the day what you're trying to do you're trying to get a result on you exactly um, and then so we'll do some review stuff so the backs might do a review while the forwards are doing weights and then just flip over so and then a bit of food and then the Monday day Monday lunchtime is normally our walkthrough so we'll go through some of the moves that we're going to do for that next week and then Tuesday is our heavy day so Tuesday will be like a forward unit session while backs are doing weights right. and then flip over again so backs unit sessions forwards doing weights um, bit of food a preview so we'll watch who we're playing so right. for example we're playing Chiefs so watch their tendencies what they try to do how we can try to exploit them um, and then that's our big session of the day it'll be like a lot of contact a lot of on feet a couple of hours um, yeah that's that's the big session and then Tuesday I'll, I'll drive back to, to Cornwall um, and then Wednesday's my day off so I'll try to try to do something where there's like a walk or get in the sea yeah. um, just keep the body moving um, drive back up then Thursday night uh, Thursday morning sorry Thursday's our quick day so we're quick so if you're in the 23 you've yep. got a real quick like powerful power based gym session right. straight out to the field all your attacks done get to work get home Right. And then Friday team run, Saturday play. So you only really do weights twice a week, then? two, three, uh, times, two three, times. three times a week. Yeah, so you do lowers Monday, uppers Tuesday, power Thursday. And then if you're not playing, then you've got Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. Yeah, you get smashed. <laughs> you don't want to be in the non twenty three. <laughs> you absolutely, you get ridden. Yeah. So like, um, you know, you just touched on like analysing the other teams. Yeah. Because you've played for a couple of Prem teams now. Yeah. Um, do you kind of know a little bit about, do they have to change what they go through every no, season? Because um, you're like, oh, I know what they're going to do. Like, it's, it's so weird. So like, the Chiefs have had the same call since I was there. Oh, really? But you've still got to stop it. Like, it's, yeah. Like, yeah. It's you all, don't know if they're going to call it or not. But you, can, you can hear them calling it, but it's, they've still got to, oh, right. you've still got to stop them. Yeah. So for, it doesn't really make a difference anyway. Everyone in, at the minute in the Prem is doing the same thing. Right. So it's just trying to find where you get those little like half percents, one percenters, but it's the team that prepares well in the week. You know, there's a lot of boys that do a lot of, they do hours of analysis. Um, Have you like found that like in the last 10 years, rugby has developed so much like professionally yeah. and like the game in general, like the way it's played, how fast it is, um, like physically. Yeah, physically is the probably the, the one where I can see the most. Yeah the most gains because everyone's just getting bigger faster stronger so then you've obviously got to catch up catch up but then yeah. also as well you, you're handling like my ball skills are going to be on top because trying to I'm trying as well get another little dimension of my game yeah. where I'm more selectable than someone else so if yeah, I can yeah. if I can still be big and win the gain line but I can still pass the ball you know pretty good then that's that's quite good for you know for me personally but I'm just trying to get better and then if I get better then hopefully the guy next to me can see that so we're just trying to push each other all the time yeah. but we're lucky at Bath because we've got so many international players and star players the environment's very much what's um, what's Cocker to Singer like to play with because I, I think oh, he's, he's huge mate, I think he's brilliant like, I think he's quite underrated I know he's yeah. playing for England but no, no, yeah. I think he's quite underrated so he's 6'3 six, 6'4 six, six, but yeah. he's like He's 120 kilos, so he's like nearly 19 stone. <laughs> on the he's one of the fastest players in our team. Yeah. So he's nearly fast. He scored at the weekend, didn't he? Like yeah. he just took off. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably as fast as Anthony Watson. So that's how quick the guy is. He can 
move. Because he hasn't been playing that long, has he? No, he's so young. I think he's yeah. 22, 23. Yeah. So. But he didn't take it up till like his <sighs> late teens. He's so big. It's crazy. I don't think he knows how big he is. No. But yeah, we're, we're so blessed because we got like. Um, it must be quite nice to have someone like that outside. You've got him, Jonathan Joseph, yeah. Anthony Watson. Uh, That's a hell of a match. We've got Roy McConaughey, he's went to the World Cup with England. Sam Underhill, Tulipe Falatau. Man, he's just, you know, it's ridiculous. Side. Yeah, and, it, and it's good because um, I, I see it as that and I just always see myself as that kid from Campbell. So I'm like, oh my God, I get to play with Anthony Watson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, whereas... Yeah, like they're actually my friends now. Well, yeah. I hope they are. Anyway, Fuck, I hope they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be shit if I wasn't. But <laughs> no, nah, they're, like they're they're guys that they're guys that have always got time for me. Yeah, and I, I still act like a sponge because those guys they've played the World Cup finals, they play for the Lions, so I want to pick up as much as I can because then it's beneficial because I can hopefully pass it on to someone else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, like you, I remember watching um, you did like a little. Was it a bit of a podcast thing with like your your other brothers about yeah, mental yeah. health? Yeah, um, and like you, I think you touched on like reflection and stuff. Yeah, um, like do you how are you like finding reflection during your career? Do you try and reflect on the times that you're like say you got a good win at the weekend? Do you try and reflect on that, or do you just try and like move on to the next? Because a lot of a lot of it is all like no next game, next game. Yeah, a lot of it is, and I've got better, but like like you said, a lot of athletes are very much next week yeah. right, I've won that I lost it right yeah. what's the next one yeah, yeah. it's like whereas I'm starting to enjoy it I'm yeah. starting to enjoy those moments whereas like if Slow we win down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually sit in the moment stay in the moment talk with the boys about the game um, and just enjoy it like yeah. enjoy for what it is because I know in I don't know how long I'm, four or five years time it's going to be done and I don't want to look back and go like fuck I actually didn't stay still I just went always went next job next job so mm. I feel now I've got a real good balance of appreciating what what it is yeah but then also as well just being as well being task task focus so knowing knowing I've got right there's a big game next week and the week after that but also just realising what it is like it's a game of rugby yeah at the end of the day yeah exactly I've been yeah. doing it long enough so yeah, yeah. just enjoying it with the people that I'm with remembering why you did it exactly yeah get yeah. falling in love with it again which is which is important yeah definitely mate um what I was going to uh, touch on as well was obviously being down here and we talked about it earlier yeah. like, you know lack of um, resources down here with especially with rugby we're, we produce some brilliant rugby players I think yeah like so yourself um, Jack Dick, Dickie Brothers yeah Dickies um, I know Jimmy Stevens played yeah. professional rugby for Mate. what was it Leicester yeah yeah um, he was he was a good player. Right? He was huge. Remember him? Like he just didn't mate, change from like last, thirteen. Wait, last time I seen him, he had blonde highlights in his hair. But like, you were big enough. You were scared. You were scared enough to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> he used to call him Buzz Lightyear, chin at uh, oh man, at, at Trio College. At least to run away. <laughs> <They're> like, <"Wait, laughs> <what?"> <laughs> <laughs> and like used to hide in the change rooms on the on, like on the game day. But oh, give me so we, I remember we used, to, we used to go to the Sunday eighties nightclub when we were younger. It's called Twilight, and I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jimmy, Jimmy used to go all the time but Jimmy used to he wear long hair yeah he, like, but he used to wear like real tight because he was massive he was like yeah. literally the size he is now Mate, he was strong but, like 12 years old wasn't he, like, so he was, strong. but um, before he went he used to go and do press ups and bicep curls oh did he yeah and we were just like we were too scared to tell him like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> <laughs> we were just like oh yeah really cool Jim <laughs> but like, he is unreal Mate, yeah. he was such a good player wasn't he yeah. and he's such a nice guy like yeah. him and his family is, I know. remember playing um, against he he went to St. I's school yeah yeah and, that's right yeah. yeah and we uh, played a game down there and he beat us single handedly yeah just no one could get near him just strong he'd like hand players off and just yeah. throw them yeah I remember. and we're like this kid's like 16 like how's he doing that? yeah let's remember that I remember in our year year 10 or 11 yeah we we had this prop called Slim. He was Pete Jenkins. He's yeah, like yeah. a twenty eight stone. Yeah. We just on a tap penalty, give it to him. And think used to run over everyone. Yeah. Jimmy picked him up over his shoulders. Yeah. And we just all stood just like. <gasps> yeah. I can just I remember it like as yesterday. Yeah. Like we all just like oh shit, how can he do that? Yeah. I, mate, I remember we um, we had a guy called Isaac Isaac. Yeah. Fields, do you remember Isaac? I remember, like, number eight. Yeah. yeah. And he was like so super strong, strong, super so strong. He guaranteed as soon as he got the ball. 
I'm gonna break yeah. down your turnover. Yeah. He made a uh, Jimmy made him squeal like he went over <laughs> top of him and he made this like <laughs> sort of oh. noise and like we all like looked at each other thinking there's no way we're getting near that guy. <laughs> nah. no, he was but, so good, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. He was a good player. Um, but yeah, again, so you know they do. We do produce some good players down here. Um, unfortunately, we don't actually have any full time professional clubs. I know the Pirates are. Yeah. They're not a full time. They are. They are. They are, are yeah, they are full time. Like you say, it's just because I know some of them do have part time jobs. Yeah, like some of the that's players. what I mean. So like, a lot of them are full time, and then some of them do have part time because, right, okay. like you say, the there are a few cut funding. Right. Yeah. Quite a lot of funding yeah, yeah. from I think it's over a million pounds. So, you know, you're you're asking. You can't expect no. to be able to sustain. No, and you're trying to ask money. people to be professional athletes on not a lot of money is is tough. Yeah. So you know, I, I don't blame them trying to get jobs. But yeah, I do feel sorry. I do feel that like Cornwall needs a professional team. And I think like they need that stadium, don't they? They need yeah. the stadium, mate. I think if if they get the stadium um, and the Pirates are playing out of there, it will give them an opportunity and like a platform to get into the Prem. Um, and I think what will happen with that is like the clubs around it will grow a bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. Everyone will want to get better. Yeah. Every club will get better. Yeah. You got that. You got football. So like that's another sport that's going to be good. And then you got yeah. you've got hospitality there. So yeah. People from the college who are looking to be chefs or you know work in that industry are going to get better. So it's not just like solely rugby. Like there's going to be hundreds of jobs available. Yeah. And then daily use of like meetings for for businesses to go to. Um, and it could, I just think it just help the county. You know, revenue yeah. economy will be be so good, and There's a, it's, it's, it's craving it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's craving it. And I, I, I can't wait, you know, and I hope before I finish there's that stadium because I would love to go to the Pirates and play. You know, yeah. in a stadium in Cornwall would yeah, be definitely. be unreal. It would be packed, mate. I remember when uh, the Pirates used to play at Campbell. Yeah, and like they'd have like four thousand people. Yeah, it'd like, be jammed. Standing. Yeah. Just coming from everywhere. Yeah, go and watch them play against Harlequins or yeah. Northampton, like Colin Spencer played. Yeah, I, I remember like, watching that. Yeah. And I remember watching uh, Harlequins up at Kenwyn yeah. when Will Greenwood was playing. Yeah. Like, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's those sort of things. But, um, but I do enjoy Cornwall though because it's got such a strong grassroots community. Yeah. So like when Penryn play Camborne or Penryn play with Ruth, it's always a good crowd. And it's still strong. Like many juniors are still strong. Yeah. And I, I really like that. Like they're not getting. It's not. I don't. I don't want to be sound disrespectful. They're not getting like bred off to chief straight away. No. It's, they're actually staying and playing for their clubs. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is great. It was great to see. Yeah, a lot of players don't tend to change either. It's like that's their club. That like I, I've always played here. But a lot of players, no matter who they play for, they will play from minis all the way up through to senior rugby. Yeah, play for that team. Yeah. And it's uh, part of like a community, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so, like, obviously, you've gone on to be professional. You've got Sa your brother Sam and Joel. Um, your old man must be pretty proud of. Yeah, what you boys being able to go on. Doesn't say. It. Well, he, he he started to, but when he was younger, he was very quiet and he was very. I remember playing a game for Chiefs. And I played quite well, but he was just like, "Oh, you missed this," or you should have done that and yeah. it's always like fuck it's never good enough yeah 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 but um, it's a lot better now um, I think he just probably wanted the best for you didn't he yeah, yeah. and he, yeah he did exactly i just seen it obviously I was just like oh fuck I've never, never done anything good here <laughs> I could have scored 10 tries it wouldn't matter he would have yeah. still missed that tackle yeah exactly he always remembers <laughs> the stuff that you know you could work on um, but now it's good like it's nice as well because as a, as a group of brothers as well we, we know how hard it is to to be a professional athlete it, we yeah. know how tough it is but then I still think we're really good at knowing where we come from yeah 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 I still Definitely, yeah, yeah I, I think that we've got such a good balance and like I was in Rajuf on Saturday watching the sevens and it, it just didn't feel like I, I went away yeah yeah because there's still the same people there that I know yeah and they're still asking me how I am. Like, do you know what I mean it's, yeah 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 definitely they're genuine people yeah I, I like that I like coming home yeah Things don't really change much down here anyway. No, they, and I so. like that. Yeah. As much as there's a there's a there's a bigger world out there, also as well, like acknowledging where you're from and how lucky we are to to be here in this in this county is is unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what like what was it like um, at the World Cup then when you went to Japan? Japan, yeah. Yeah, it was because have you retired from? Yeah, yeah, I finished. I, I I did the World Cup in 2015 and I did this one in 2019. 
and just the toll it is is four months five months away oh, you know and time. without seeing the kids around her, that's you mm. know that's tough and for her to be just a single mum pretty much is a big ask you know yeah. doing the school runs all the time doesn't get like a break right. especially when I was because I was in Newcastle so it's not as if she could just drop the kids off to to her mums and dads yeah yeah like she was literally had to on it every chew day. it yeah every day no break, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah exactly oh, yeah. so as soon as I finished um, I was just like oh, I'm done because it's not like playing for Fiji is great because you're playing for the right reasons it's not a financial reward so you can't say that you're playing it to get paid yeah of course because you, you don't you, you lose money you break even so yeah um, to play rugby to play international rugby for for the badge is I, I can't describe it yeah also I love to also love obviously get paid but that's the way it is and yeah. I, I love that about it it still keeps that that thing alive you know that little fire like fuck this is why I actually play rugby yeah yeah so that, I enjoyed that but then to do it with my brother was was great because uh, yeah we can rip each other like it's so weird because it's not very often that happens though like three no. brothers playing professional rugby and then two of them going on to play in the no. World Cup it's so it's so weird because like if I'm at Bath or we're from here it's always like we're the Fijians in the team so we're always like something different we're always a bit different than the other guys in our team growing up here but when we go to Fiji we're like we're the English boys and we're, like the, <laughs> we're like the white guys oh, yeah. it's so weird yeah. and we're just like fuck like Shit, I don't actually feel for G and I feel like caught like so oh, Cornish. Just Cornish. Now. Just so yeah. Cornish now. Yeah. But um that like, is great. It's great as also as well, it's great to hook up with that my dad's side of their family and yeah. see see what it was like for him. Um because like um how poor Camborne seemed. My old man used to live in a tin shack with nine brothers and one sister. Yeah. And there wasn't any bedrooms in the village. Or, so yeah, yeah I, I've seen that. I witnessed it. Yeah. So for him, a council house in in Crofty, in Paul, in Camborne, yeah, must have been like a mansion yeah, because yeah. He, he was on a wood floor, <laughs> you know, like with a fire in the middle of the floor. And that's yeah. not even exaggerating. That's that's like I've been. Well, that's, that's just the culture over there. Isn't yeah, it? And it, yeah, yeah. I love it there. Yeah. It's great. And I, it was so lucky. And then the kids came over as well. Yeah. So the kids actually got to experience it. They didn't just see the the palm trees and hotels they actually went with us and they were That's like cool. yeah they were they were blown away by it but they're also I think they they really acknowledged how lucky they are they yeah. appreciate it like oh that's good mate yeah especially for being so young as well yeah I think it's important as well I think it's important for me and Anna to show them how lucky they are because yeah. like they could they wouldn't have known anything else no, I suppose, would exactly they? Yeah. it's like you guys are lucky you got clothes on your back you got shoes yeah when you eat there's food in the cupboard yeah of course so yeah. no, we're we're grateful. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Um with like going back to um going back to like, you know, Cornish rugby sort of thing. Um, not just Cornish rugby, but like any youngster that's like, you know, striving to be a professional or look into that. Yeah. What sort of a, like a, advice would you say that is most important well, what sort of thing is most important You've got to, enjoy to focus it. on? just got to enjoy it you got to enjoy it haven't you like I couldn't like with cricket I love cricket mm. but I didn't want to do it full time because I didn't love it no. I didn't like yeah, yeah. I couldn't commit to it as much as I could to rugby um, so it has to be like your life I suppose yeah and yeah. You, got, you got to want to do it like you can't just do it because your parents want you to do it or your mates are doing it it's, it helps but you've obviously got to want you've got to sacrifice a lot yeah. so if you enjoy the sport you're doing mm. then it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. But yeah, I still I still enjoy rugby the same as I did when I was 10 years old. Like, nothing's changed. Look forward to Saturday. Yeah, I, I still get that little bit of stuff in my like, oh, okay. got a game coming up. <laughs> yeah, and like, on Saturday watching the sevens, I wanted to get my boots on and play. Did you? Yeah, and uh, nothing, like, the negative stuff never came, it'd be like, oh, what if I got injured or what if Baffa? I just wanted to play rugby, like, it's just yeah, yeah. literally all I wanted to do. Like kids, the kid. There's a few kids walking past with the ball. I'm just like, do you know what yeah, I mean? I just yeah. love being mate, involved in good. rugby. That fire's still burning, then. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And uh, when I finish, I'm going to be back down here. Um, so I'd love to get stuck into rugby when I'm here. I don't know if I'll set up my own coaching. I don't know if I set up my own business coaching, or but I'll definitely stay involved in rugby. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's definitely well, it's all I've known since. I was what eight years old, Campbell. Yeah. So, I've not, I've never had a job. So, no. this has been 
my P1 tool. It makes sense to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm fucked if I, if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to find a job, I don't know what I'll be doing. Go, go and work up Crofty Mines. Oh, <laughs> happily. That's what the old man did, though. Yeah, he did that, yeah. He did that. I think that's, that was the thing going at the time, so... I think it was quite good actually. I think because all the rugby team played, so yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way to to uh, get involved. I think, and he did that. Then he was in the police, so he's had a lot of jobs. Um, but yeah, he, as well, he just loves Cornwall. He loves like what it stands for, the people, mm. um, that that community feel. I think is is yeah. great because obviously after he got paralysed, you you see who your friends are, and to be fair, yeah. the whole town came in and pitched in and they helped you, out. You had that. Uh charity match didn't yeah you? we raised well, over about 25 grand wow. and you know for 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 a town that's that's not the most wealthiest you know it just shows you you got a problem they'll all chip in and yeah. help out wherever they can yeah, yeah so yeah i love going back home like it's so weird because I, obviously i live in newquay but i'm a Campbell boy so like yeah. going back to Campbell it's like yeah i'll drive through if i go and see my dad I always drive through town and back on. <laughs> yeah, I always go. So, so if I see my dad, I always go like the long way so I can go through town. Yeah. And then I was like, where you come through here? I was like, it's my home. Like, yeah, and then yeah. I'd be like, oh, you're right. You're nice <laughs> to see you. She was like, what the hell are you doing? What did she even say then? Yeah. I was like, oh, just Campbell slang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's like so Cornish, isn't it? Because yeah. like people from like Anna's, Anna's like born and raised in Cornwall and she's Cornish, but yeah. like. She's like, when you go to Campbell, and I don't understand Newquay a word Cal- that you're saying. Yeah, I think Cornish towns are all different. Like, yeah. you go down like there's Penzance and there's it's different like, there again. Yeah, completely different. Not that you go to Penzance a lot. No, you I haven't been there for, you been there for ages. Yeah. No, no. You play cricket still? A little bit, not much, but um, yeah, just I'm gonna focus on doing this now. That's good, man. So, yeah. I remember you played cricket eh? I know oh, you were so fast when you were bowling <laughs> oh, I remember man because you used to go remember you used to go training in Madruth yeah at that indoor thing yeah like, fuck man yeah, you cr- and Ross Chadwick cricket centre of excellence and they had like um, tennis courts inside and if you bowled it on the line it would come up and like hit you in the head <laughs> just a move yeah, wouldn't yeah, it all yeah. the time yeah oh mate Oh, I miss those days good times well mate thanks for coming on the podcast no, thanks mate. for having me I really appreciate that it's been great thanks for your time um yeah, like you know, obviously very well known in the Cornish rugby community, and um, you know, a lot of people have a lot of respect for you for what oh, you've done. Cheers, Jake. And, and um, being so grounded and being who you are, really. Appreciate so, that. Yeah. Cheers for coming on, mate. Thanks very much. Nice one. Cheers, pal.